Industries. Hello everybody, Togali, and welcome back to another episode of Mob Smasher Industries here on the FQB Beyond Mod Pack. And first I wanted to say thank you so much for all your feedback and support on the first episode. It is much appreciated. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. It is a lot of fun creating it for you. But today in Mob Smasher Industries, first we are going to talk about tool upgrades because I've been busy testing out a couple things after reading your comments and uh, the researchers and so on and me got together um, and came up with a plan um, to upgrade these tools and it is all about copper okay you guys told me that if I put one part copper on any of my tools that you have a chance of getting XP for breaking any kind of block and it is amazing. I did not know about that. So thank you very much for bringing that to my attention. Um, and the funny thing is that it actually even made the tools tougher. Um, the axe here upgraded with a copper tool rod as well as the shovel. And it boosted them, I think, from 150-ish durability up to 260. And you guys see they're fully repaired um, by using them. And the one, this one right here, the, the hammer that we made, I since upgraded with a manilium hammerhead because I was exploring the nether for a long time. And also one of the plates that were stone, I changed for copper. So now this is, this is really amazing. And I wanted to show you guys, I'm going to do the same on the pickaxe right here, which I also upgraded to manilium, by the way, because I don't need to worry about repairing them anymore. So all you do is you put that in there. Let's see here real quick. Even that, look at that. It goes from 1,085 durability up to 1,400. And of course, now I'm gonna get this repaired much easier. The only one I did not upgrade is the sword because I kinda wanna keep the cactus. And the thing is having mending moss on the sword, you know, whenever you kill something, you're gonna get XP. So we don't really need it. But I wanted to show you guys this here now, how this works. So we're just gonna come down here. Let's go down to yeah, 45-ish, 46-ish, because that is where the best iron layer is. And you guys see, I'm getting XP by just breaking stone, which is amazing, because that means that this hammer now is going to stay repaired. Let's run up here real fast to see how much XP is on it, so we can see that. Put it in here. Look at that. It was at zero. Now 54 XP. So after last episode, I spent a lot of time exploring in the nether. I collected a bunch of this uh, material that we discovered called cobalt and also ardite. This stuff right here is cobalt and I don't see any ardite right now. And I also got a bunch of this phalarite um, that I don't know what the usage is for yet. It's probably later on. Oh, there's some ardite right there. And also a bunch of this nether quartz um, so we can make more redstone contraptions when needed. Um, but, um, on my way back, I, from this nether fortress, I took a direct route instead of running everywhere. And I ended up building this tunnel right here. That is quite a ways. So let's see if I come down here, if the map will show it. Um, where am I? Right there. Yeah, you guys see, I built a straight tunnel up to here and over and the nether fortress is... I think right here, yeah. Because no, it goes through here. Yeah, right about here. There's the Nether Fortress. You can't see it at this Y level. I would have to go up higher. And I secured a mob spawner there, a blaze spawner. I completely encased it. Um, and then I actually killed some uh, black skeletons. They are called Wither skeletons. Um, that are very dangerous. Um, but I was lucky enough to get a um, drop of evil. And I gave that to our researchers, and they found out that uh, that allows us to manipulate dirt into a high-spawning um, grass type. And also to allow us to pick up these spawners. So once we are in need of a blaze spawner or anything, I can run back there and just pick both of those blaze spawners up and bring them home with us. Um, but I noticed that the laptop was blinking over here. It looked like I got a message, or the forward team had a message. And I thought that we'll go ahead and check that one out first now. Welcome Torgal. I am Sarah, the Mob Smasher Industries AI. 
My programming and processing speed is at NASA level and was intended to be used to make extremely difficult mob calculations, but I guess I was reduced to assist you in your tasks on this project. So, what do you want? Sarah, please open new emails. Sure, because clicking on it would be too hard. Oh, it looks like email from HQ uh, with the title Secure Nether Portal. Sarah, please read this email to me. Hi Torgal. We are very sorry for the loss of the forward team that scouted the nether. We will make sure their families are well compensated. We request that the portal location in the nether is secured with a solid structure immediately before we can send in our researchers and engineers. We need to have a strong foothold in the nether to ensure a unlimited supply of lava for future projects. Don't dilly dilly with this one. Regards. HQ. Hey, it looks like that okay. shouldn't be a hard I guess project. I am not needed anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. Thank you very much. Man, she is having an attitude for an AI. I can still hear you. Okay. Um, apparently, she can still hear. So, how about now? Okay, I don't think she can hear us anymore. I'm going to put this laptop away until I need her again. Because I don't want to put up with that. So, um... We gotta secure this a little bit because there's lots of gas and stuff in the air here all the time. I'm actually quite um, surprised that we haven't been shot at just yet. Last time when I was in the nether a lot, they actually shot out the, the nether portal to gas and I had to fix holes and stuff. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do here is we're gonna have to get rid of all these bones and stuff and um, maybe make them some nice graves and stuff to... I don't think we want to have the graves here. I think we're going to put the graves over in the overworld. So I'm going to take everything down here and then make them a nice little grave site in the overworld. And then I'll get started with making just a very simple um, protection here. A little, little tower or something like that. And we'll figure it out what we want exactly. But just so gas cannot shoot at us anymore. I am just going around and turning off all these different fires that we have here. So if I need to run from danger, I don't step into something hot. These are far enough away. And this is what the structure looks like now. I went with iron doors. I don't think anything here can be destroyed by gas fireballs. Um, because this is chiseled cobble. This is uh, um, smooth stone slabs. And we got the obsidian pressure plates. Um, so only players activate those not mobs and on the inside nothing special i went with chiseled netherrack in here because i didn't want to i don't know just a little bit different color here and then on the bottom i added two fence gates just so nothing can walk in from down there and nothing should be able to spawn on these stairs so besides the occasional zombie pigment i don't think we have um anything that can get in our way and i don't think we need the Oh, there's no more. Is there one on the side? No, okay. Um, they're spawning on top here. F7? Yes, there is. All right. Let's put these here. Even though it's too low, it doesn't matter though. Let's just go ahead and light it up anyway. So that's our first project done over here for today. And now I want to show you guys a few things in the overworld. Number one. I want to show you first where we have set up a grave site for our fallen team members. And you guys also saw, I'm pretty sure that I added, started adding some storage drawers because like right here, you guys see, I have almost two full drawers of netherrack and so on over here. I set up a little bit of an auto smelting um, where I just been doing netherrack and also conduit binder and some glass and, you know, just put it in here and filter it down. It's good enough for now. Um, and over here is a chest with all the casts. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this. I stumbled across this thing here, which is made by just six stone slabs. And it's from multi storage. So we're going to have to look into what this is. Because I have no idea. I've never seen this mod before. Um, but you can make this stone chunk box. I am not sure what that is for. It's size of a half slab let's see if we can put it upper yes we can also put it in the upper one and then you have this GUI here used space and used slots 
Maximum is based on an item's maximum stack size. Empty slots count to 64. And used slots maximum can be increased by stacking a second chest and or using an upgrade. And you can just put stuff in here and I, I don't know. I don't know what this is for. Does it keep its inventory when you break it? No. So I'm not exactly sure what makes this better than some, I guess. If you think about it. How big is a regular chest? That is 9 times 3. And this one here is, well, slots. Use slots. 32. So that is 5 more slots than a chest. And you know what? I'm going to have to try now. I have to make another one real quick. And see... Oh, we're going to get mobs in a second. Uh, let's get 8 of these and sleep first. Just to make sure... Hopefully, Sarah isn't going to start talking to us out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, maybe she doesn't stand by. I hope she is. Okay, so we got two of these. Let's see if we can put them in the same block space. Um, let's put them up here. No, it doesn't. Oh, I can. Okay. So now I made two of this. So now is this the same one? Yes. So now we have 64 slots and one of these. Hmm. I am not sure. Does this stack on the first one? No. So yeah, I'm not sure. If you just extend. Let's see here real quick. How do I get to the, to the next slots down here? And what is this button do? I have no idea. If you guys know about this mod, feel free to let me know out in the comments what this is about. Otherwise, I'll leave it for here now. And maybe, you know, it's awesome and we'll figure it out. And what if I break it? I get both back. Okay. All right. Let me just leave them right here for now. Okay, and you get a shift. I cannot shift right click on the top one. I can only shift right click it directly on the other one. So that now makes it one. Okay, cool. But let me show you guys. I set up a little bit of a graveyard over here. I am sure there's going to be many more fallen comrades that we're going to put down over here. And these are just made with three dirt and two cobblestone. You can craft these gravestones instead of using the one from DecoCraft and not just put the three corpses over here. <laughs> Little, little crazy. Oh, and I found a little enclosure over here for our horsey. Because up on the hill, you guys see, I have a 2x2 two two spruce. Yes, I do. I found it. I was just gliding around right down here. There is a bunch of spruce wood and I finally found some. It's actually really close. And I did explore up here. So I said, I'm just going to fly south. And then I found this right away. And there's also snow if I ever need any. And I made this little path up here. And there is our... Little tree farm now, so I can just, you know, use the stone lumber axe. Take these down and put it back in here. There's really no reason for me to carry it around. So now we got a good supply of wood as well. And you guys see over here, I put in a little bit of a retaining wall with an overhang. And our engineers have left us a bunch of machines right here that we're going to start setting up now. Because I would like to get started with a little bit of thermal expansion or processing and also the induction smelter just so I can make alloys and those kind of things when I need it. Um, but in order to do that, our engineers needed to set up an atomic reconstructor first. Because in order to make these things right here, the canola press, I think it was. Yes, we needed an Inori crystal. And for this advanced coil, we needed some of the Rustonia crystal. And then we found out that on this world here, there is no black quartz that you can find underground. I was looking through my ores from mining, and I couldn't find any. I'm like, this is impossible that I haven't found any black quartz yet, right? But if you check, there is a recipe that the FTB team seems to put in here, where you combine a coal with another quartz to make a black quartz. I, I actually like this. Better than if you find it naturally spawning, because there used to be so much of that in the world, and I also found out, I believe my buddy Shakti told me about this. Um, applied, because I'm, after our first live stream, 
I asked the people on Discord, and I was like, guys, have you noticed there's not a single AE2 meteor? I wonder if maybe my world is not configured right or something. But then he mentioned to me that apparently these are craftable as well. So let's go here, like the inscriber. Meteorites disabled. Presses are craftable. Check that out. Wow. Okay. That's pretty pricey. Okay, so that is how you make these. Where's the fourth one? This one. With just silica. But that is cool. So there's none of this. So now can we also craft sky stone? Wow. Uh, <laughs> four obsidian, four blocks of coal make you eight. So that's definitely not going to turn into a building block for the future. But anyway, so our engineers made us this, um, this little cache here of with items that we're gonna set up and in order to power this atomic reconstructor i just put down a coal generator here and that way if i dump anything in here let me just show you in case you're not familiar with how you make these kind of items let's just make four of them you can just toss them in front of the reconstructor and then press this button you laser it and it turns them into these uh, actual editions version like what i have above my head right there <laughs> Um, and you guys see this is set to pulse. If you take a, oh, where did I put it? There it is. A redstone torch. That is the wrench. You can just right click this. If I right click, you see it's going to go to deactivation and pulse. Deactivation means you need to put a lever on. Otherwise it just keeps shooting a laser. Um, and you know, that's a waste of energy. But anyway, so we got a bunch of machines and I decided I'd like to go with something simple. And that is um the canola power okay so what we can do for example here is let's make a little bit of room right there and then i probably want to also clean this out here for a second so i can run some cables underneath i was looking at what different cables we can use there is no ducts in thermal expansion um so thermal dynamics i don't know if it's going to get ported or not um, then under pipes, we don't really have any power. Okay. And then the only other thing I found was when you go to add flux, this flux network stuff here, and there is flux, solar flux reborn, these cables, but none of them are craftable. I don't know if there's no recipe for them or if they're just not craftable. And then I found these things here from flux networks. There's a flux plug and so on. And I'm, that's, I think for power transport, I'm pretty sure. But this is quite pricey to make these, and I don't have any enderpearls. We gotta figure out how to get our hands on enderpearls. But until then, I simply went with the energy conduits right here. This conductive iron you can make in the smeltery with one redstone and one iron makes you one conductive iron right here. That's one redstone, and that is one. Why is it th show 36 millibuckets? Oh, I'm guessing that is just a ratio. That That's actually not enough. 36 millibuckets. What does it show here? You need 144. Yes, so it's one and one. That's how I did it. And the conduit binder is still the same recipe. Um, so I said that I want to go with canola power. For right now, we're simply just going to set up something very small. And then once we have more ores and so on, we can expand this and make it a more efficient thing. So what you do is, first of all, you need to put power into the canola press wow that charged fast i put that down and it instantly charged from this cold generator and how this works is you put a canola a piece of canola in there and that makes you 80 millibuckets of canola oil and then next to that we're gonna put a fermenting barrel and you guys see it goes over here automatically no pipes needed as long as they're touching and that's gonna turn into oil and then we can put down a do I want to put that underneath? Yeah, let's put that right there. And you guys see, this is now starting. It got these 80 millibuckets of oil. And it's working at 100 RF a tick. That's pretty good. And now check this out. One of these made us 10,000 RF. That is really good just for being able to run over there and harvest a few, right? So I figured that would be a good start for us for some easy power right here. And let's close this up with that. Are these the same? Oh. Apparently I use different cobblestone on this wall here. I gotta make sure not to use this one, right? This is the other chiseled one here. Yes. Okay. 
All right, let's put this back. Okay, and then from here, we can simply come out with the conduits. Now, the other thing is that I can also come back to power this. All right, here's, here's a question here. Hmm. If I get rid of this one, I think it probably lost its power, right? No, it kept it. All right, that's cool. So what I want to see here real quick is that if I run back here with a conduit now, to here, this is full, and this is... Apparently it needed 640... Oh, it filled the conduit, 640 RF. So right now we have 9360. I want to see if I put one of these in here. If we're having a surplus. All right, there we go. Easily. Okay, so I actually don't need this generator here to power the canola press. If that makes sense. But I'm going to keep that right above here for now. Just because I have it, you know, what's the... What's the point of not using it? And this button right here we can put on the machine itself. So now that is cool because that means I have a self-sustaining system right here. And I'm probably going to put a trap door here so I can access this and see it. And now... Oh, getting dark. I, you guys see that I have barely put up any torches. Because I always sleep very fast and I don't want to waste torches. Because very soon we're going to make ourselves... Uh, Actually, what does it take to make that? Maybe I can make one already. It's uh, just a torch. I don't know what it's called. The Mega Torch. We can make this. And this is just like the old Magnum Torch from Extra Utilities, right? I think that was it. Yes. And it simply stops spawning in a 64 block radius. And I want to use one of those so we don't have to, you know, plaster the whole area with torches. Okay, so now let's put these three down here. And then we're going to use the induction smelter right there. Furnace right there. And our pulverizer right here. And now i got some basic ore processing set up right here. This one is set to... Hey! Auto input disabled. Auto output enabled. That is new. I have not seen this before. Don't tell me. Oh my god, that would be awesome. Um, do, do, do. What can we use for this real quick? Let's just make two chests. Uh, but I can't open them. If I don't put a half slap there. Um, what's a crate cost? Small crate. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, I know what we can do. Let's do that. I think that would be better. That That's a good idea. Um, let's come over here and let's make one, two chests, like that, and then let's turn the rest of these planks over, and one, two, one, two. We'll just use two storage drawers. So we'll put this right there. Oh, but then I don't have an output. Okay, no problem. Let's do it like this. Wait, I did sleep, right? Yes. <laughs> um, okay, let's move this machine over one. To here. Right there. And then we have a shared output right here. So we can have another input. So this is our input and input. Let's turn this input on. Let's turn this input on and the output to the left. And the output to the right. Alright, I did decide to make one of these... Small storage crates here to put in between these two. And now I would like to find out... What are we going to test on? Let's make some sand. Uh, even though I have plenty right here. I went to the desert around the corner. And I don't know. Got about 10 stacks or so. But let's see here. Okay, it did go in here, but... All right, wow. 5 RF a tick? Because it's not getting enough power, I'm guessing. That's fine. Uh, we'll fix that in a second. I just wanted to know if the auto input works. 
and it only took eight pieces, right? Yeah. Interesting. I have no idea what's happening here. It's down to three RF. Okay, let's put another few in here real quick to see if it's going to pick up. I want to see if this goes faster. All right, it's going up. Four RF. Okay. I don't know if it only takes as much as it knows it has power for. That would be interesting. And it auto extracted it. Direct. This is a very nifty little setup. But I also would like to add something up here. And because we don't have an easy way of getting items into here yet. I just made another barrel with a hopper. And we're simply going to put our canola up in here. And this was the wrong one. That's awesome. <laughs> Not what I wanted. Wow. Okay. What? Wow, look how far this stuff flew. What's going on here? Overreact much? Uh-huh, that looks to be all of them. That was crazy. All right, we need to put that here. Okay, so close this off. Now put the hopper here. And put the canola. I can't believe how far this stuff flew. Okay, and it's filling it up in here. Wow, this is happening fast. Okay. Yeah, and it, I mean, we should have a surplus. Like I said, this is just the beginning right now, and I'm sure we're going to get a much better setup very, very soon. Do I really not have a, a trapdoor? Wow, I thought I made a few trapdoors. Let's go ahead and make one real quick. Um, fine, I guess we're going with spruce. Not really what I wanted. And I would like this to be against that. So when I open it here, I can clearly see this guy. Okay, cool. Well, that is that is pretty nice so far. Now, oh, a couple more things here I wanted to show you real quick. The way I've been getting leather here, and I show you what I needed the leather for, is you simply hang cooked food on these drying racks, and after a few minutes, they turn into leather. And the leather, I was trusting around with that um, because I wanted to repair the glider. And I repaired it once already, and I made an anvil here, and with... The glider and leather, and then some XP. Let's see how many it uses to repair it fully. Three. So about three leather to fully repair your glider. And that is nice. I, I, I think that is quite balanced because the mail. glider is so strong you have mail. Uh, in this version here. So I don't you mind that mail. you need to repair it every once in a while because you, you really get around really, really you fast. Have mail. Oh my god, I hear you. you. I'm coming. You have mail. Unbelievable. Stop. All right, I'm here. Let's see it. Looks like we have a new mail from HQ labeled Witch Hut Containment. Sarah, would you please read that one to me? Hi, Thorgal. Your next project is to secure the Witch Hut in the nearby swamp and build an efficient AFK farm as well as an experienced farm. Please ensure to maximize mob spawning potential by using the new spawning ground as well as mob transportation technologies. Don't spare any costs as the redstone and glowstone these witches drop can be sold off for high prices and our stockholders want to see results from this project in their portfolios. Get to it. HQ. Thank you very much, Sarah. You can go shut down again or go into suspend mode, whichever you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and take this bed with me. Make sure we're going to leave that right here. And we're going to take our speedboat. With our chicken companion. And we're gonna set out here. I got all the stuff ready. For us to set up this witch farm. And it should be fairly easy to set up. It's not a lot to it. And it should um, give us a lot, a lot of drops. It's gonna be very efficient. Because we're gonna use cursed earth. And we don't need to worry about um, lighting up the area because of that. So that's really good. First thing I want to do is put my bed down out here because it's going to take me probably a few night cycles to get this done. And how it works with the witch farm is 
it's I think one outside of these um, oak logs and the minimum height is 64 so we're gonna be able to get three layers in here as far as I understand I have not made one before and these are all the things that are prepared for this it should be everything that we need so let's go ahead and get this started so the first thing I want to make sure is that I put one circle around this first like that so once I tear the witch hut down I don't forget where it was and also I'm going to leave the oak wood pillars themselves it's an eight by seven so if something ever happens I should be able you know if I got a creeper explosion or something here tearing down the whole farm <laughs> I will be able to remember where it was and then the second layer is going to be here a two air gap between of course and then another two air gap above that we should be able to put a third one ah, okay let me get up there where are we gonna put the scaffolding let's put it let's put it over here by the bed yeah let's put it right here and actually that wasn't a good idea give it back to me we're gonna off center it one so i can actually get up on the actual dirt like this right here okay so the other thing is of course i'm gonna need to tear down everything else here real quick which shouldn't be a lot of work so let me go ahead and tear everything down and just prepare the three um dirt platforms here and in the witch hut itself there's nothing in it um it's just uh one of the the planters and then one crafting table and a cauldron usually i don't think i've ever seen anything else in them maybe back in the days there used to be um a chest but i could be wrong but anyways i'm gonna sleep first and then continue tearing this down all right and i made these wands here just to help me out with closing this a little bit quicker and then before we continue with the conveyors or the vector plates and so on i want to make sure that i have the the lighting set up first so i don't have anything spawning on me while i'm waiting in here good thing is that within just like in the garden farm within this witch farm area here only witches can spawn you cannot have any other mobs spawn in this area it's only for witches okay and the way i said i'm going to do this is let me put oh i cannot put scaffolding so i'm gonna need all right let me get these guys right here and the levers and it's gonna be like that there's gonna be a redstone lamp and we're gonna have to what are we gonna use for this let's use for now um just spruce planks because uh, yeah spruce slabs sorry because i have those because the thing is today we're just gonna set up the farm we're not gonna make it look pretty we can do that let's put them on the lower so i don't need to have any lights out here and so yeah we're just gonna set this up so it's functional today and then next time or between episodes in a live stream or something we're gonna encase this in something because my thought is also that because we cannot move these witches okay they are they're gonna be here oh that doesn't work that was knuckle ahead of me this one stays there but i actually need to have this out one further because i'm gonna use cobblestone slabs to actually darken this on the sides and on the front we're going to use darkened glass um as i was saying is we can never move the the witches here so that's gonna stay here and it's just gonna be our center for the mob farms and whatnot so it's probably gonna be the the main area right here is gonna be where our base is gonna be in our whole mob factory set up I'm just going to go around halfway because, again, in the front, I'm going to use a dark glass. Um, 
and so I was thinking that possibly, you know, to bring the blaze uh, spawners over here and stuff, um, and then just build an addition and so on. So I would like to come up with a nice design on what to encase this farm in. And then we can add additions for the next mob farm and so on and so on to this, which should be pretty cool. So we're going to put one right there. I just want to have something I can walk around here to turn these lights on and off because that's how we're going to disable spawning. Yes, and then I had one right here. I remembered that. I tested it out in... Uh, a single player, just um, one of these layers here, and that way I was sure that it actually works. Because, like I said, I've never built a a witch farm before. You guys see, D3 light up the entire platform here. And then each one of these platforms here is going to be... Let me get that out first. Wrong bag. Let's get put this away here. We don't need any of this right now anymore. Or these two. Okay, and let's get some cobblestone. Because again, you won't be able to see this when we're done dressing this up. And this one here is simply going to go around like this. And that's actually what's going to block the lighting from the sides and half slab. Let's just, I just want to show you guys one layer and then I'll replicate the other layers in just a second. So that is that, and then put dirt here, and the next one is going to be here. Really? You... I cannot jump up there. Well, I guess I lost this dirt. <laughs> That's fine. Mm. Do it like this. Let me turn off F7 again, because it for some reason always causes FPS issues. Always has. Did I get it underneath? No. Right here. And then the pillars here on the side, I'm probably, you know what, I should have just made that. I should have just made that something solid. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to come down right here. And I'll take the corners off later, right here. Yes. Okay, let me get some solid cobblestone. Just like that. Okay, so now this is one too tall. Yes. And then on the top, I think I'm going to use for now just um, spruce slabs, just so nothing can spawn up here. And enclose the entire thing like this. So that's too high. And then when we're done, we're going to slap the drop of evil on this. So we get the mob spawning going and yeah let me go ahead and replicate the same thing all the way around and then um actually no i'm gonna i got one more thing i want to show you real quick come on get up there okay and one more yes and for the conveyors itself we're gonna just use the vector plates here cheap to make and if you hold down shift you can place them under your feet and you see when i let go they push me forward and with Cursed Earth, um, it does work underneath these vector plates, which is super nice. So I'm going to repeat this same thing um, on the other two levels below me. And then we just got to set up the kill chamber, and that's it. So all three floors are the same. Uh, the only thing is, and I noticed it early on after the, the first platform, I did not want it to be facing the other way, right? I wanted it to be facing towards the helicopter landing area over there, so I turned the vector plates around and I just had to move the the lights around that was it so that was a quick fix and now um we have everything ready over here besides setting up how we actually want to kill them so I want this to be the two drop here okay and in the middle right here and we're gonna do this a little bit unconventional we're gonna build in the water for a minute that's not what I wanted we're gonna put it right here yes now I want to use this thing right here the What's it called here? Stone junk box that we made earlier and see, you know, it, it looks like it holds a lot more than a chest and it's cheap to make. So we're going to use use that for now. Excuse me, got the hiccups. Um, and we're simply going to run a hopper into this and one into that and then over to both sides. 
that's going to be a very low cost farm which the stockholders should be very happy about because the throughput's going to be crazy there's going to be a lot of stuff happening here and then on top of this we're going to put the punji sticks and in front of that we are going to put the hmm what am i going to use for you we are going to put the dark glass my chisel here we go and let's go ahead and make this a little bit nicer looking one for now just because it's gonna be the main front for the time being i'm gonna have that right here yeah just like that and then the dark glass goes up that way yes that should work okay so now let's get this here and we'll get our sugar cane and then we are um let me put one two three four in here just so i can drag this easy you guys see that and then we can take this out and that makes us punji sticks Ooh, this makes a three i only need nine oops okay well i actually need seven sorry i don't need nine if it makes nine and these we're just gonna put on here there we go stuff dies items fall into there the punji sticks do not destroy items and then now we still have to make some dark glass this one here of course i smelted up earlier there we go two stacks of dark glass that should be enough and this goes just like that unfortunately oh i could do something yes i can use the the wand to make this a little bit quicker so we're gonna go one two three four because it can only do five at a time so one two three four i only need four okay let's do it like this hmm okay it might have not been that much quicker but it's a little bit quicker than doing it by hand i guess because now i can just what you can only do one of those oh well that's a bust right there i don't know why that is weird these ones could be so much more useful okay just like that and let's hop down and do the rest normal right i can't do see this stuff i can do five at a time but not that who knows why these ones are so weird i i never understood maybe there's a reason why the stone ones cannot go up and down and the iron ones do a little bit more and you have to get up to the diamond one Why did I only have 63 in the second one? But now, anyways, this should now make this farm completely dark when I turn it off. And we can... I don't see any reason. Again, guys, I'm. this is not pretty yet and whatnot, but it's fine. I don't want it to be pretty just yet. I want to make sure that it works. And we get this done this episode so HQ does not yell at me. Or dilly dally... Dilly, dilly dally? dilly dallying <laughs> all right i kind of want to see f7 uh you can't really see it in there but i am very sure that it is completely dark in there and i'm turning making it dark first before i put the cursed earth on because cursed earth spreads i believe a further when it's dark and b of course it spreads in the in the in the bright i don't think it spreads at all and hopefully then when we use this drop of evil oh that reminds me i only have one i forgot you can pick up more than one spawner with a drop of evil but every time i click the drop of evil on the spawner it will it will use it up well, they're not hard to get. I know what another fortress is to get more. But which one do we want to initiate first? The, the bottom one? And then... Here's the thing. I'm wondering if I can possibly... Let's try this. Let's try this here for a second. It might be possible. So if I do this bottom one here, okay? And I get this one back... And I put a piece of dirt here. 
Then I put another piece of dirt here. And then one here. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I'm going to be able to spread this. Okay, let me get this out of here. I'm not going to turn on the lights for a long time, probably. So now if I come to here, and then possibly... Yeah, um, actually, right here. Yes. That's the thing, is I want to see if the Cursed Earth will spread up to the other platform. Eventually. It's definitely not going to happen right away. But who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. Where is... I got to get that out first. And let's just give this a try. If it doesn't work, again, I know where to get them. And I should be able to... Come around over here and somewhat... Click towards the middle. This is how far I can reach. You guys ready? Oh my god, is it gonna turn the grass underneath it? Alright, so that is definitely Cursed Earth. It did not go to this one here. You guys saw that. And are we getting any spawns in here? Hmm. There we go. Oh my god, that scared me. I thought they're not gonna spawn. But they do. All right. Good. There we go. Let me turn down the sound while we're in the area. Uh, hostile creatures down to 30. Okay, good. Yay, we're getting witches and lots of them. So this over here. I wonder why it did not come out to this one. Is it because something is taking up this? I want to try this real quick. If this is going to spread out here. But I doubt it. You know what? I'm not even going to mess around with this. I'm just going to go ahead and get me some... Cursed Earth. Uh, some more drops of evil. Sorry. That's what I was trying to say. Between this and next episode. And make sure that I get all three going. But this is already going to be very efficient. Check it out. It's been running for what? Maybe a minute? We've already got seven redstone, seven glowstone. And so on. So that is definitely a success. The, you, the slots, seven of them, but only 42 of 4096. So I think this is pretty good. Um, and it doesn't matter if I'm in range or not. And I'm. this is not running on a server, so there's not going to be anything chunk loaded when I'm not online. So this should not be a problem overflowing or something. But, you know, it's awesome to get the free glowstone and redstone. And even the sugar is pretty useful when with the amount of mob farms they're going to make so we can make more and more vector plates. And it kind of has a, a feeling of a, of a modern house almost, doesn't it? The cobble maybe doesn't fit, but it almost looks like a modern house. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Now, before we end, I wanted to mention that the laptop with the emails and so on that's going to be a thing that's going to keep going throughout the series that hq is going to send us mail and that is an actual real email address you guys can send mob smasher industries an email if you guys have questions or you have um any kind of um, input or suggestions or you you have any other questions for me or anything um i hope that you guys uh, take advantage of um, being able to set Mob Smasher Industries an email. And the email address is going to be down in the description and also on the screen right now. Very easy. It's just mob-smasher-industries at gmail.com. So just like that, just with a dash in between at gmail.com. And I'm really looking forward to you guys' emails. It would be a lot of fun to get some mail. And then, of course, HQ is going to send... Those emails forward to my account here at Mob Smasher Industries, and then I'm going to choose which ones to use and so on, of course, and I hope that it's going to be a lot of fun. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, stay safe, and bye-bye.